Hi all, welcome back to my channel. It's Matthew Bodie back with another South African genealogy tutorial. So today I'm going to just be going through a practical example of a query that was posted on the South African genealogy um, Facebook group. I just thought it was a nice little practical example and just um, wanted to kind of demonstrate my thought process every time um, a query comes through. Um, there are quite, over the last year and a half, there have been quite a few new um, digitized South African collections and I've definitely been taking full advantage of them. So here is the query. I've just put a screenshot in. I haven't included any names to protect the person's privacy. So hopefully they won't mind me um, doing this video. So this is the um, post that was made. My paternal grandfather was Cornelius Theodorus Jobur. He died between 1960 and 1965, and the family thinks it was in Volksrust. How do I find a record of his death? I have already searched all the places, or blah blah blah, below the marriage certificate. I had a look at that marriage certificate, and it just had his name and an approximate year of birth, so it didn't help a great deal. But that information, um, the year and a place of death, did help a great deal, so... Automatically, I thought, all right, Volksrust is in the former chance file, and there are quite a few um, civil registrations online for um, little towns in the chance file. So um, sometimes you get lucky, and if you search the catalog, there'll be a whole lot of civil registrations uploaded for um, individual towns. So that was the first thing I did, just to see if there was any um, Volksrust specific catalogs. So in this case, what I do is I just go onto Family Search, click on the catalog. And then if I go to titles here, all I need to do is type Volksrust. Um, I highly doubt there's any other towns in the world. It's quite a South African name, but the, um, also called Volksrust. So I knew it was pretty safe. I didn't need to type transfile anything else in. And as you can see, there was a civil collection, a civil death collection for Volksrust. So we got lucky there. And using the, so, sorry, there is an index, but unfortunately that's been undigitized, weirdly. Very strange, because there is a DGS number. So it is, it was digitized once upon a time, but obviously that access has been revoked. So I'll have to follow up with that. So at that time, this, is, this was the case also. So I wasn't able to utilize the index. So I thought, okay, we're going to have to do some manual trawling. Um, Folkstrust isn't a very big town, so... Oh, well, I didn't mind doing the manual trawling. So they said between 1960 and 1965 is when the family thought that they died. So as you can see, this index covers deaths between the years 1933 to 1972. So that works out well. Open that in a new tab. And then if we just go through about halfway through, see what year that takes us to. And as you can see here, people, these deaths all occurred in 1945, so I'm going to have to want to go and view more images. Let's go. Um, image number 500. What year does that take us to? 1949. So maybe let's go close to the end. Let's say image 700. So basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to find when the year 1960 starts, and then obviously... Logically, you'd start scrolling from there. So um, here's the year 1957. So if I go a few more images in, maybe about image 730. I'm looking at the bottom here for the year. See, that's 1962. So I'm looking for the year as well as the entry numbers. So I want to scroll from, um, let me just zoom in to give you an example. I want to scroll from entry number one slash 1960 because that will be the first death registered in the year 1960 and then just work my way from there. So if we go, so there's, um, with these civil registrations, the town specific ones, they're, um, they're organized as a few sort of abridged entries on one page. There is another catalog which has individual death notices, which I'll show you how to find soon. Okay. So, okay, still not in the year 1960. Right, so here we are. Here's the first entry for the year 1960. 
Now, I've already searched for this death notice, so I know that the death didn't actually occur until 1961. I just did that from some manual trawling. All I did was I um, looked at the surname co um, column here, and I looked for the surname Yobo, and once I saw um, Yobo, Cornelius Theodorus down here, sort of like a bingo moment. So I knew that was in the year 1961, and from memory it was entry number 51. So if I go seven, image 725. Right. I'll go back a bit. All right, so we're in the year um, 1961 now. Just need to go about two more images in to find Cornelius' death entry. Oh, and I think it is, there's entry number 51, which I remembered, so. Oh no, entry, it was entry number 49, sorry, my mistake. All right, so there's his death entry. And as you can see, it gives us a bit of information which we never had before, such as the fact that um, uh, he was born on the 24th of August 1910, which is new information. Before that, we're in the new and approximated year of birth. So as I said, these town-specific civil registrations only give you, um, it doesn't give you the full information at the time the death was registered. For that, you'd actually need to find the form of information of death, which is um, also known as a civil death notice, or um, I suppose you could also call it a vault copy death certificate, which is what it really is. So to do that, I'm going to want to go to one of my favorite catalogs, as morbid as it may sound, and it is the South Africa, the South African Civil Deaths catalog, which covers the years 1955 to 1966. And believe me when I say this, that collection is an absolute gold mine. It contains exact dates of birth, contains causes of death, which for genetic purposes is just invaluable. Oftentimes it includes place of birth. So, in this case, um, we, are, we just found out Cornelius's exact date, um, date of birth, but we didn't, it doesn't say where he was born. So, fingers crossed, normally just lists a province, but sometimes you get lucky and it lists a town. So, we're going to use this entry number and year to actually go and find Cornelius's original um, death certificate. So, titles. Um, the catalogue that I referenced earlier is the South African Deaths Catalog from 1955. Um, so I'm just going to type South Africa Death 1955. And there you go. There you go. So we from this um, abridged entry already know the registration district, which is Folksrust, and the um, entry number 49 for the year 1961. So let's scroll down here until we see the year 1961 on the right hand side of the film description. Alright, so here we're in the year 1961. These, um, these civil deaths, which also cover Namibia by the way, um, are registered um, alphabetically by town. So, we want to look for where the letter V will be covered. Alright, so here, Swell and Dump to Freydefoot, so it should be in this catalogue, fingers crossed. So basically what I'm doing now is just, I'll go 2,000 images in and see what town we're on. So at Farinachen, let's um, go a few more images in until we get to Fox Rust. Virginia, no. So another brilliant thing about this catalog is that it actually um, includes all provinces as well, which is quite handy. You don't have to find any um, province, any, sorry, any catalogs. Um, unique to a specific province, it just has them all. So, I'm to go back a bit. 
Um, should be almost there. Yeah, folks rust. So, um, this is entry number 37 for the year 1961. So, and we want um, entry number 49. So, we're going to go in 12 more images. So, let's go 2513. These must be organized a bit strangely. Some must be out of place. Let's go a few more images in. Okay, so... Then here we have it. So here is Cornelius's original form of information of death. So, now we have his full name, which we had before, his date of birth, and now at the time I was originally looking for this, I was keeping my fingers crossed that it would list a town of birth, and that it did, which was a very exciting moment, because with this information, a date of birth, town of birth, and very Afrikaans names like Cornelius Theodorus Jobur, I knew it was very likely he was baptized in a Dutch Reformed church um, in that town. I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, because my Afrikaans pronunciations aren't the greatest. So... With this information, we're going to now go and try and find his baptism, because that will list his parents. Afrikaans, um, Dutch Reformed Church baptisms are fantastic. They list the father's full name and the mother's full maiden name, dates of birth, dates of baptism. Um, yes, very genealogically rich. So, my um, the Dutch Reformed catalogue, where um, I found my great-grandfather's baptism. I always just try and relate it to my personal research to try and find the appropriate catalogue. So my great-grandfather was baptised in the Enkia Church in um, Boxburg, and I could remember what catalogue that was found on. If I, so if I just type in South Africa, well, actually no, let's go Transvaal, Dutch Reformed, and see, see what catalogues come up. Yep, that's the one. So this is the NHK and the NGK church registers. I think for, I posted a query about this in the genealogy group and um, I think they combined for a time. Well, they, the church is, um, I don't know, there was some agreement. And for some reason, the um, Transvaal branch of the church was renamed to this. Anyway, I don't know the full story, but this is the catalog where the Enkia baptisms are contained for the Transvaal. So... We are looking for the year 1910. However, um, you'll notice that he was baptized, or sorry, he was born quite late in the year, or relatively late in the year, August. And I know that baptisms normally occur a few months after birth. So first off, I'm going to go and check the 1911 registers. So yeah, um, this catalog, you can see they're organized again by um, alphabetically by town. So if I'm going to scroll down and look for the year 1911 and that town name. Luckily that town falls um, at the beginning of the catalogue, so quite it's quite easy to find. So I'm going to open that in a new tab. Basically what we have to do is just double check that we've got the right um, town in the right year. So yes, baptism registers. And then it just gets scrolling. So basically what I'm looking for right now are the first names Cornelius Theodorus. You can also search by the surname Yobur by looking in that column, but I figured we have first names, so let's try search by that first. So I'm going through here, looking for anyone with the name Cornelius Theodorus. You notice every baptism has a number next to it, so you'll never get lost browsing through these records. Just make sure you've looked at every number for the page.
So I haven't got them just yet. Let's go a few more images in. And here we have it. It was a pretty awesome moment for all involved finding this record. So going purely off the um, basically family hearsay, we were able to locate his civil death notice, which gave us the information um, needed to find a baptismal entry, which took the which took this individual back another generation. So now we have another couple we can research. Anyway, I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions um, about this this video in particular, or just my thought process in general about any of the catalogs on Family Search, there's um, a lot of South African data available now, and um, I'll keep saying a lot of countries have to pay a lot of money to access records similar to South Africa. So just tap into that and take advantage of that while you can. Um, I, I hope that. I hope that South African records continue to be free for the foreseeable future, but yes, I'm just kind of capitalizing on the situation as it is for now, just in case. So anyway, I hope that this video was helpful. I um, hope you have a great evening. Goodbye.